Hello and welcome to a shadowy French Italian affair on the edge. Right, maybe I should explain. So we have another Fox Knives on the channel, and this is a Fox Bastinelli. And Bastinelli, I would have thought, is an Italian name. Um, so sorry for anyone I might offend right now, but it isn't. Um, the designer is uh, Bastien uh, Coves. Bastien Cove or Coves, I don't know if the S is silent or not, a C-O-V-E-S. And he's a French knife maker. So this is a, a collab <laughs> collaboration between a French knife maker and Fox, the Italian knife maker out of uh, Maniaggio, Italy. Right, let's get him back down after that very long drawn out introduction and speak about uh, this very aggressive looking, interesting looking knife. Um, so as per usual, we'll do materials first, then I'll speak dimensions and then speak a little bit about the design, the finish and what I think about the knife. So what we have here is um, an Elmex steel blade. I think this is the first Elmex steel I'm actually covering uh, on the channel, but a uh, very good, uh, very nice blade steel. Uh, the handle is titanium, clip stainless steel, uh, sort of one of those flat plate bent stainless steel clips. Uh, the screws are all Torx, and the pivot is a bronze, a phosphor bronze washer. Very, very similar specs. In fact, I shouldn't say that. I was going to say it's similar specs to the last Fox knives I did, but a uh, completely different blade steel. So I take that back. Ignore that comment. Um, right, let's go through dimensions. Blade length is 10 centimeters or 3.94 inches. And once again, from the point of the handle closest to the tip. Uh, 10, point, uh, 10 centimeters, what did I say? 10 centimeters or 3.94 inches, yeah. Uh, thickness, 4 mils, quite a chunky blade. Doesn't look that chunky, but that's because you've got a little bit of a beveled edge running around the edge, uh, running around the back of the knife, running around the back of the blade, which, which makes it look a little bit um, thinner. Yo, take a breath and let's try and speak English. Uh, so, uh, overall, what did I say? Four mils. That's 0.16 inches. If I didn't mention that, uh, overall length of the knife is 22 centimeters or 8.66 inches. And then weight. We'll see it. And I hope this. My black hole scale is. I don't know if I've been ignoring him for too long, but um, it's been very temperamental the last little while. So, fingers crossed. Aha. We have life. Right, we're on ounces. Let's see. This is uh, quite a sturdily built heavy knife. So let's just see how that is. 5.5 ounces. Yep. And that is uh, 156 grams. So yep, not the lightest knife, but uh, it's not a knife that's trying to be light, I think. Um, that is not a knife that's trying to be discreet in any way, shape or form even uh, with its stealthy all black look. All right, let's get him open and have a little, a little look at the design. So we've got a very clearly modified Warncliffe blade, big fuller running along the blade on either side, and then a, a type of sort of swedge that's running, you can see from that little high point on the blade, uh, all the way down to the tip. And then this I thought quite interesting. I don't think I've seen this on a knife before. So it's got jimping on the back, but that jimping is it's almost like coinage jimping. So very fine. You can hear that. A very fine jimping running in that whole recessed area of the blade. So a long but interesting, very different type of jimping. All right. Uh, we've got a little plunge line coming down all the way into the middle of a nice big sharpening choil and then this shark fin style uh, flipper tab. <laughs> I don't know why I always forget the name of a flipper tab. But yeah, you can see it sticking out the back there. In fact, that really looks shark finish in the waves of the water. Okay, 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 let's keep going. <laughs> Flip that out again. 
Um, right, size of the size of the knife, uh, big. This is not a small knife, and you can see my medium-sized hands very, very easily with plenty room to spare fit onto the knife. Uh, you know, even onto that into that area of the grip, I suppose you can see uh, uh, larger hands will fit in very, very comfortably. On that and then we've got uh, a, a finger choil over there with this actually concave uh, some edge to it is try turn it like that that the light catches it you can see that those areas are, are sort of recessed inwards but um, quite a nice interesting interesting shape and then the rest of the the handle scale not scale the frame you can see has got these um, lines running down little ridges running along there and then another little bit of track. it's quite a well I wouldn't say fussy shape but interesting a, a number of sort of curved lines uh, all over the design of the knife there's no flat edges on this knife anywhere you look so you've got you know the curves running around there and the curve there and the curves running around there it's all so sort of very flowy and curvy but comfortable in hand uh, you know it does feel it does feel very good in hand uh, let's speak about that uh, pocket clip so we got tip up and it is right side only and you know i suppose the fact that it is shaped to that heavily shaped handle um, almost forces the issue otherwise you'd have to have two different clips in the packaging and obviously the uh, the extra screws drilled over there interesting as well is the uh, so we've got that we've got that sort of scalloped is it scalloped but that sort of concave shape over there with the lines on there there's none of that on the on the lock side so all of that detail is on the show side and on the lock side it's very plain very sort of flat really except for the beveled edge around um, around the edge of the knife as usual on the lock we've got the stainless steel insert but an enormous one in this case I, I, it's like really somebody decided that we they required a massive a massive stainless steel insert and in this very big overstop channel overstop channel over travel stop wow i don't know what came out of my mouth there <laughs> we'll uh, we'll just we'll just keep on going we'll ignore that as well a few things we have to ignore in this review so all in all uh yeah quite a quite an aggressively styled large knife um seems to be made for uh, those heavy tasks you know when you get the knife in hand you can see where you're where your thumb falls over there, everything comfortably in place, but you get a good grip and you can, you know, really sort of bear down on that uh, on that blade. That's that's what its purpose seems to be. So interesting design. Uh, the stone wash finish over the whole knife. That black stone wash finish, nicely done there. There is a different um, another option to the knife. So you've got one where uh, from this side it would look the same. Uh, except for the color, but it's uh, titanium, uh, same blade steel, uh, except that it's a, a light gray stone wash. And on the other side, the show side, the handle is carbon fiber. So there is another option uh, to this knife. Right. Now, we're going to get into Fox Knives ongoing quality issues. So here's another one that I've received from Fox where it just isn't perfect. And, um, you know, the price that you're paying for this and the fact that it's a company like Fox and it comes out of Italy, it just should be better. And um, so I really don't know what's going on there. But in this particular case, that I felt and heard when I first started messing around with the knife and looking around it, it's the lock. So the lock, if you can hear there when I release it, you'll hear that sort of spring sound. And if you can hear that, it's like a little dong. But it's not it's not locking up, it's not making contact with the blade. So you actually get blade rock on this knife. Now at this price, that's I mean it's just unacceptable. And then looking at the knife now, you know, I started inspecting it, and you look at the the lock up, that lock is quite is quite far over, but what what bothers me, sorry, let me just get that on screen so you can see it. 
what bothers me is the angle of you know so that so the face of the knife the, that the lock locks up with that angle let's just get it like that so you can see it is very very shallow so normally that angle would be more tilted over so that when the lock moves over and you know as it wears in so that lock over time moves more and more and more over us i think you, you see what i mean the the radius it, it will continue making contact with that blade in this particular instance i don't know if it will that that angle looks too shallow and if i pull um it's let's ah soft flip but never mind if you look at the angle let's put that down for a second if you look at the angle there of that blade so that the face where the lock goes up against it so first of all you can see that that very solid and very early lock up on the medford knife this is the medford slim midi by the way but look at the angle of that the way it's been ground there the blade that's at a steep angle and that's typically what a knife looks like and and that's what it should look like and this blade is just if i get there ah oh boy if i get there again and try and get light on it it's just it looks too shallow to me it really does look too shallow to me and by the way i mean you look at it as well it looks a little bit rough there as well um but net result anyway either way whether you agree with that standpoint or not is it's not making contact there and we've got a blade that is loose and and as i say you know for a, for a brand like fox and for the price you're paying for this um that just it shouldn't be the case so after saying that again after saying i shouldn't say that again after complaining <laughs> i'm now going to thank uh bnt for supplying this knife <laughs> to me but once again if it wasn't for them i wouldn't have access to these uh knives uh, or so many knives so many variety knives of knives um, and I wouldn't be able to see things like this and bring this uh, sort of thing to your attention so you know this is one of those knives attractive all around great brand it comes out of Italy they do make nice stuff but you know if this specific knife uh, attracts you and you're looking for it uh, you know be careful go check it out make sure you get a good one this might be an isolated case but as i mentioned in the last fox review that i said you know it can't be an isolated case on every single knife that i'm getting because it seems that pretty much every knife that i've gotten except for the one black fox knife that was bang on everything was right on it um, but the rest of the knives that I've received have all had some issue with them, whether it's been the edge or the finish on something or, you know, something not quite lined, but there's always been an issue and it's been on everyone bar one that um, I've received. So, so that all said again, thank you, Blades and Triggers. I uh, appreciate your support for providing these knives to me. Uh, this guy at Blades and Triggers is 5,625 Rand. And then uh, I saw him, if you're interested in the dollar price, at Blade HQ uh, for $356 thereabouts. So, you know, again, I say it's not an inexpensive knife. And if you pay that kind of money, if you hand that kind of money over, you're expecting a knife to be right. It should be right. That's not an unreasonable um, expectation. Okay. So, <laughs> have I finished griping? I think I have. Um, is there anything else that I need to say on the knife um i think i'm just glancing over it at my at my notes um and i think i've covered everything <laughs> i think i've complained enough for one video so there it is guys that was the fox knives shadow um bastinelli design nice looking knife uh but it has it's it's a flawed item it has issues and uh, maybe you'll find one where those uh, those issues aren't present um, and hopefully you do guys I think that's oh you know uh, what I didn't do is I didn't uh, do size comparisons so and I don't think I did in my last video either so uh, I've been complaining so much that I forget what I'm supposed to be doing so here we go uh, Spyderco Manix 2 pop that on there so you can see in this case uh, not often uh, is the manix to the smaller knife in my size comparisons but it is similarish sort of shape obviously not the blade but uh, you know that sort of flowy line kind of thing going there 
Right, and um, what else do I have here? Oh yes, uh, here we go. The other knife that I did the lockup comparison with. So there's the Medford Slim Midi. Also a little bit smaller than this knife. So, so not a little guy, you know, if you want to EDC something bigger and you can make sure that you get the quality. Okay, I'll stop speaking about the quality. Uh, right. Look at that, and then the um, knife that uh, I always say that probably most people do know have encountered the um, Benchmade Mini Barrage. Um, and I've still got a knife that I pulled out a little while ago, and once again, I'll not, it doesn't have a name. It's one of those where it's got a, a, a code for the name of the knife, um, but it's a Boker knife. But let's just pop there. See, it's still on my desk and pop him out there. Now, there you go. Those two knives are very similar. You know, it's probably just as well. And, and by the way, this wasn't planned, but this Boker knife is um, a lot cheaper. Uh, it doesn't have as good material, so it's just a stainless steel handle and a G10 on the other side, and it's 14C28 in um, uh, blade steel. But the finish on this Boker, and, and let's face it, that's not always the case with Boker, they've had their issues, but a much cheaper knife and everything on this knife is absolutely rock solid. Um, but you know, like I say, nowadays when you buy a knife from a reputable knife maker, that should be just an expectation. That's not too much to ask. But <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I wanted to say. Uh, uh, those two knives are very similar in style and size. Um, and again, I'll just I'll just add the name of this. Uh, I'll never remember it. It's just a series of letters and numbers. It doesn't have a, an actual name for that knife. Well, guys, I've really rambled on today. Um, but uh, there you go. That's <laughs> there. It is the uh, Fox Knives Shadow. And let's get him into the middle of him so he can at least have a. And look at this um, wayward child. Uh, guys, uh, once again, thanks so much for joining me. I really do appreciate you stopping by. Um, please, uh, I appeal to you again to um, subscribe and hit that bell icon. I would love you to join me more often. And other than that, you go well and God bless.